the sunshine? Where is the moonlight? Does this dark cloud have a silver line? How many tears fall? How many days crawl by? Will I ever get back to this life? This wave of grief is drowning me Held under by all our need Can anyone hear me? Does anyone care? Show me the one way to get there One day Every mountain you climb, we'll climb together Here in his arms The salt of the earth, the light of the world Today the memories are holding me down You can't face tomorrow while holding yesterday Now your babies are all wearing crowns To the weary and the weak Come on to me Lay your burdens down Be safe in my arms until you come to where we are. I am the one way to get there. One day at a time seems like forever. Every mountain you climb, we'll climb together. Good afternoon. Welcome to Day by Day with Rob and Jody. I'm Rob. And I'm Jody. And we're excited to welcome you to the Day by Day with Rob and Jody show. That's what it is. Podcast shows, it's radio, show. whatever. <laughs> Whatever we have called it for three years. That's right. I want to I wanna welcome my beautiful wife, Jody, into the studio. How you doing today, babe? I'm wonderful, honey. How are you? I'm doing okay. It's been a, a halfway decent day. Look handsome in your blue shirt. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's the second time I've been told I was handsome today. What is with that? It's <laughs> five o'clock in the afternoon. That's pretty good. Two twice in one day. Okay. There you go. Um. Anyhow, well, we want to welcome everybody uh, as we're going to be talking today a little bit about um, God's supernatural protection. Mm-hmm. That's what we're going to be talking about today. And uh, God knows you need it in this environment anymore. You sure do. I mean, we needed it before the COVID-19. Now you really need it. Mm, yeah. So anyhow, uh, we want to we want to welcome you and uh, and uh, say hello to everybody out on Facebook, Hi, and YouTube, and on whatever podcast you might be listening to. Uh, we're excited to have you with us today. And... Um, we want to thank Hope Media Studios and Hope Radio Recovery Center for helping us to help you find hope in Jesus Christ day by day. And, you know, if you're struggling in this time, uh, there's somebody here at Hope Recovery who can answer your phone call and who can uh, um, say hello and, and, and help you out. So um, maybe we can get Sean to throw the phone number for Hope Recovery Center up on the screen at some point here. 
Or, or give us. it to us right now. Because I don't remember it off the top of my head. But uh, Hey, Sean. Give it to you, too. There he is. It is 951-603-0031. One uh, more time. 951-603-0031. There you go. If you need help or if you're trying to think of stupid thoughts, thoughts like suicide or something like that, please give us a call. That's right. Anytime, we're, please give us a call. Give me a call. We're, we're available even in this crisis that's going on. So, Well, all right. So um, we want to um, invite you to leave comments or ask questions, and uh, you can contact us on our website at www tcbforjc.org or you can contact us on Facebook at Day by Day with Rob and Jody and you can send us an email at Day by Day with Rob and Jody at gmail.com and all of those Rob is spelled with two B's and Jody with a Y. If you haven't already please like our Facebook page and share the video by pressing the share button below and also select notification of the show button there on Facebook and it'll notify you every time we have a new new show live. Mm -hmm. Check out our YouTube channel Day by Day with Rob and Jody. Hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified when new shows are posted. And look for us on your favorite podcasting site and be sure to subscribe there as well. And if this show has been a blessing to you, please support our ministry with a text to give option. Simply send the words Day by Day with no spaces in it day by day to 44321 and there you can choose a donation amount and a monthly or a one-time giving and we hope that you'll consider an ongoing donation to support our ministry and that was what now four 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 three two one and send the words day by day with no spaces in it and there and your and the amount of money you wish to do it'll, it'll prompt you it'll prompt you at that point yeah and if um, it doesn't let us know <laughs> otherwise we may have a technical technical issue yeah yeah and that would be ugly because we be. still have bills to pay to put this podcast on. There you go. But the Lord does provide. We're just trying to give y'all an opportunity if you wish to contribute. That's great. If you don't, that's great, too. We still love you. <laughs> All right. So, so you want to talk about what we're going to talk about today? Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> no. I feel like I should have that crown on my head, you know, from that remember that butter imperial margarine, that's what it was. <laughs> dun, da, 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 pop. There goes that crown on your head, you well, know. Actually before we do that, we should have a word of prayer. Yes, and get we this, should. This show started off right. So There you go. Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together today and be the day by day with Rob and Jody podcast. And Lord, we thank you that uh you have given us Hope Recovery Center and Hope Media Studios to send our show out on. And, Lord, we're thankful for the listeners and the viewers around the world. May they be blessed and edified today. May their ears be open their hearts be receptive to the words that you give us to say. Lord, we just ask that you bless this, not only this nation, but this entire world, Lord, uh, relieving the stress and the pressures of the COVID-19 pandemic, Lord. We put it all in your hands, Lord. We say deal with it. Make it uh, so that uh, the pressure is relieved and we can all start getting back to life as normal. And, uh, Lord, we love you and we praise you and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And, yeah, what Rob was saying earlier, we are going to be talking about God's supernatural protection. And you know we're talking about my favorite passage, Psalm 91, baby. Mm -hmm. On the 91 freeway. At least if you're in California, you know exactly what that is. And see what coming on over here today is a little more traffic out there today. There was a little bit more. You know, it's been really light for the last month. Yeah. You know, like almost nobody on the road, and there was definitely more people on the road today. Mm hmm. And yeah. it stopped in the usual places like normal. And I went, wait a minute, what day is this? Yeah. Are we in a pandemic? What's going on? People are on, are they essentially driving? What What day is this? I'm not even sure what month this is. <laughs> I'm kind of questioning the year, too. Oh, it's God's year, oh, 2020. Okay. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Okay. If you listen to all the prophets, it's supposed to be a year of the shaking. Well, he, they nailed that yeah, one. We're shaking. Of course, you know, in Southern California, we're, we're a little more used to a shaking of an earthquake. I think I could almost prefer that. <laughs> yeah, to a pandemic, you yeah. betcha. At least I know where I'm going to be when it's over with, you know. Sitting on the couch, so going, was that it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I think goodness. the largest I've ever kind of got, in, I don't know, great awareness of was I was at work at the county one day. When I worked at the county at Riverside <laughs> here in DPSS homeless programs. 
many moons ago. And it was just before we got married. It was like in July, mm-hmm. and then we were getting married in end, August. End of July, yeah. And all of a sudden, kabang, there goes a 5.2 right in the middle of my house. Literally. Literally. It was, it was the epicenter. Mm-hmm. I mean, God, shelves were f- open. The, the cabinet doors were opening up. Glasses, drinking glasses that were glass, flew out and hit the floor. We had glass everywhere. TV fell off the TV fell center. off the set off the TV off the uh, table and the pictures were all off the walls and I mean it was just like I mean, the newspaper came because they know me so of course they call me and they're like so how's your house I'm like yeah come on over yeah. <laughs> of course I, I find funny that story is that you know Jody has a collection of, of statue eagles. I and, love my eagles. And they're up on cabinets up, up above the kitchen, between the kitchen and the living room, and several eagles took flight. Yes, they did. Yes. So, I think we saved all of them but, but, but one. I think we did. I think we, you know, there's a little bit of glue and a little bit Lots of bubble gum. A little glue and rubber bands, and we made, and now they all have uh, museum putty Museum putty on the bottom of them, so they yeah. hopefully won't fly during the next one. Yeah. There's just stuff we do out here in California. you got to get used to it, so... Yeah. Life and times of Rob and Jody. Anyway, how about we get to our lessons about protection? All right, we can do that. So here we go. We got protection. Let's start off with Second Thessalonians three three in the New King James Version. Second Thessalonians three three. But the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. There you go. Any questions? We can go home now. <laughs> Oh, we got a few more. Okay, so now you got that. It's just that he will, who will establish you. That's the Lord establishing you. Or you can put your name in there. So the Lord establishes Jody, who guards Jody from the evil one. And we all know who the evil one is, right? Do I need to really say Lucifer, Satan, devil? principalities, powers, and rulers of the darkness. I mean, all that kind of stuff, really. So it's just amazing to go ahead and see, you know, um, really how well God does protect us day by day, just even before all this pandemic stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I always say, you know, at Psalm 9, I mean, I get on the freeway, and first the freeway open, opens up to let me on. And I'm like, Yes! Thank you, Abba. Or I say, Toda Abba, which is, I'll, thank you, Daddy. I want to clarify that. The cars move out of the way. The freeway doesn't well, open yeah, up. Well, yeah, okay. You know? The cars move out of the when way. When the freeway opens up, that's because of the earthquakes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah, I just, I'm, it, whatever. <laughs> Got me speechless now. So whenever the cars move out of the way, I'm saying, thank <laughs> you, Lord, by doing it in Hebrew. Toda Abba, because d- God is my Daddy. Yeah. So there you go. That's another story about God, how God became my daddy. So that that's a testimony we don't have time for today. But it's a good one. So with that, it's it's really cool to see how God protects us day by day. And that's a before the pandemic. He protects us on the job. He protects us at home. He protects us at the market, the grocery store, running to Walmart and Target and all that stuff. So it's just, you know, it's an amazing thing where you realize, yeah, he does protect me. I mean, there could be something slippery on the floor and I, and I miss it. You know, like, thank you, Lord. I didn't want to fall down. That would hurt. Anyway. So now that the Lord is guarding us against the evil one. I love that. So write that down and put it on your refrigerator every day and say something about it. All righty, how about we jump to Psalm 27, verse 1. Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Mm -hmm. There you go. So who who, who are we going to be afraid of? Nobody. (coughs) So the Lord is my light and my salvation. 
Whom, will, whom shall I fear? Absolutely nobody. Not the pandemic, not the devil in Jesus' name. Nobody. Even if it looks like you could be in a really weird predicament, just take the name of Jesus and bind up the situation as it says in Matthew 18, 19. And you can bind up and loose and everything in that passage, which is not part of our lesson today. That's a bonus. Mm -hmm. So it's Matthew 18, 18 and 19 about binding and loosing. And that's where you want to go ahead and say, I am covered by the blood of Jesus. That's Revelation 12. So yeah, you are covered. So it's just, it's an amazing fact when you realize how much God does watch over us. But you got to give him permission because God is a gentleman. He won't just barge in. You got to call his name, scream his name, yell Jesus and mean it and you're not cussing. <laughs> just saying what, what's coming out your mouth. It's what you put in your heart. You put the word of God in your heart or do you put other things like too much news? Hmm. Even I've been guilty of that one here lately with all this pandemic stuff. And I've had to stop it. No more Fox News in my house. I mean, it's all nice and fine. If I need news, I go to Fox News. But I'm just saying I don't want to sit and watch it for hours. Because that'll, that'll make you go nuts. Especially right now. So I'm just kind of going, all righty. So how about we go ahead and jump into Psalm 91. Psalm 91, and we're going to concentrate on verse 1 and 2. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Wow, there's so much. How much time we got? <laughs> Okay, number one, we need we need to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. So the he there is Jody or Rob or anybody. It's you, the listener. So he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And then I will say of the Lord, Jehovah, because it's capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. So number one, you have to be able and willing to dwell in his secret place. That's where you got to give him permission. So that now you can dwell in the secret place of the Most High because you've asked the Most High to be in your life in your business, in your heart. Mm -hmm. So it's something to think about. Chew on that for a minute. Hmm? So now when if you, you need to go ahead and give the Lord permission to come into your life so that now you will dwell in the secret place. What's a secret place? Well, some people call it a prayer closet, prayer chair, you're able, it's actually when you have a, a tallit, which is a prayer shawl in Israel. It's like a, a sheet, a white sheet with blue fringes and tassels and all that kind of stuff on it and trimming. And it's just kind of really cool when you, when you see one. I, we have a couple of them at home. We should probably bring one in for the visual effect. But you take your arms out and you hold it up over your head. And now you created a tent. That is what actually is a secret place. Because now the only person in there is you and the Lord in that secret place. So now you've created that, that space. So now you can pray and nobody should disturb you in that. So that's why I say you got some people that literally go into a closet mm -hmm. so they can get away from their kids, you know. I'm not saying jump into your closet, but if that's what it takes, go for it. You just need a quiet place where you can go and hear God. It's a conversation. If you're not listening to God, he's talking loudly to you. And when you got a good rapport and conversation, he's whispering. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, how about this one? How about if we jump into Psalm 46, verse 1? Psalm 46, 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Mm -hmm. So if you're in trouble, he is there for you. Mm -hmm. I like how this, another one, write it down, put it on the refrigerator, write it on the bathroom mirror, whatever it takes. Just don't use permanent marker. Uh, <laughs> I like the fact that he's not, he's not just there. He's very present. Yes. You know, I, I think that just overemphasizes that he's there mm -hmm. tremendously. He's very present. Very present in time of trouble. Yeah. Or very present in time of COVID. Let's be blunt, shall we? Or if you if say you need to pay your rent and you're going, I need to pay my rent. And my landlord's already given me a 30-day extension. And I used that on April 1st. And now I got May 1st coming up. Now what do I do? Mm -hmm. That's a time of trouble. That's when you need to push, to really focus and go, Lord, help me. And believe in your heart. Believe, believe, believe. And don't go, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. You know, it's like, no, 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 no. That isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. You need to believe in your heart. And you know that you know that you know that you know. That you, that's your knower. Mm -hmm. That you know that God's going to take care of the problem. And he may wait to the 11th hour to do it. He did it with me. About 15 years ago, whenever I needed some rent money, he came up with it in a very ex wonderful way. So, you know, it was just an amazing time. But he did. It literally was the 11th hour or I was going to have to move. I mean, I had already gotten the three-day notice. So, you know how much of an 11th hour that is. It's like, we need money or you're moving. So they got their money, and 20 minutes later, I was back home going, thank you, Jesus. Now it was for $2,400, thank you. So, yeah, that, and that was, that was two months worth of, of rent. So, anyway. All right, how about Psalm 32, verse 7? Psalm 32, verse 7. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with the songs of deliverance. Selah. Now, does everybody know what Selah means? It means think about it. Take time to think about what it is and what's going on. You need to really, that, that gives you time to pause. And that's in the Bible. That, that's not just because we thought, oh, let's put Selah down. That's actually in your Bible. It says that. Mm -hmm. So now you got, here we go again. With You are my secret place, my hiding place. So now you are, this is the Lord is saying, you are my hiding, that, excuse me. <clears throat> you are saying to the Lord that he is your hiding place. So that's why you can go ahead and say, yeah, I get it. Now, the Lord, you shall preserve me in trouble. You will help me in trouble, Lord. You will surround, you shall surround me with songs of deliverance. That's great. Now, Grant, you can go ahead and get saved on this scripture. You can go ahead and get uh, deliverance on this scripture. You can get, you know, I, oh my gosh, you can yeah. get, you know, in a car accident, you can go, Lord, save me. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happens. I mean, there, there may be injuries, but they're not dead. Right. You know, and you'll think about it. Okay, here we go. Psalm, and we're in the Psalms today. Wow. Well, yeah, we got a few more to go. Psalm 4, verse 8. <laughs> Psalm 4, verse 8. Picking right up from where uh, the last one left off. I will both lie down in peace and sleep. 
For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. There you go. If you're having a hard time sleeping, this is a perfect verse for you to claim at night. Just read it, believe it, and go to bed and roll over and say, Good night, Lord, and you go to sleep like a baby. Mm-hmm. Again, it's going to say that, you know, I will both lie down in peace, shalom, in uh, Hebrew, which means nothing missing, nothing broken. And then you got sleep. So that right there will tell you that that you can claim this verse and say, claim it means you believe it. Mm -hmm. I use the word claim. That you can believe in your heart that you will be able to sleep soundly because the Lord is there protecting you. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. And that's exactly what it was saying that uh, in, in Psalm 32, 7, where you are my hiding place. So that's pretty cool. Okay, how about Psalm 55, 22? Psalm 55, 22. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. Mm-hmm. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved right so there you go you gotta cast your burden on the lord take that burden and toss it to him just i don't want to do it i'm not going to deal with it anymore lord you deal with it you handle it i used to have a job in fundraising for a national cancer fundraising um institution and with that, it, it would I would go ahead and, and every time we had a, a an event to come up or any kind of money that we needed to raise, I would just pray myself and my other coworkers. We would pray for the event and we would just raise stupid amount of money. And people would look at us going, "How did you do that?" It's easy. I just told the Lord to handle it, and I believed He would. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen what $100,000 looks like in cash on a conference table? I have. There you go. It, it looked really good. <laughs> it wasn't mine, but, you know, it was the Institute's money. So, all righty. How I, about... I, I like that on, 50, on uh, Psalm fifty five twenty two. Yeah. And I was just looking at my footnote in the uh, New King James uh, Study Bible. And, and, and with Psalm 5222, it says, To anyone who has experienced grief or desolation, the command to cast one's burden on the Lord is refreshing. The Lord is the one constant in life, and the one true friend, he can always bear the burden. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, he can always bear the burden, cause, and he is the one constant. Whether it's good, bad, or ugly... The Lord is the the one constant that will always be there, and, and he can he's there. always bear the burden for you. Yes, like Jody said, you got to ask him. You got to ask him. But he can bear it. The Lord is a gentleman in everything. That's why you realize that he has done everything that he can do for you. The only thing he can't do for you is say the sinner's prayer, because that is a free will. Mm-hmm. And that's your free will that you need to say, yes, Lord, I give my free will to you. I surrender my will and give it to you, Lord. That, that, that is so slick. Mm -hmm. And it's not something where you regret it. It's exciting. It's exciting to be a Christian. Because the good, the good, bad, and the ugly will happen. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen. It just depends on if you're going to be able to have the Lord Jesus help you. So think about it. Okay, where are we at? Nahum 1, verse 7. Nahum, that's one of those books you hardly ever read. That is. The Lord is good. 
a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. Mm -hmm. So not only is he there for in a day of trouble, but he's he got, he wants you to trust him. To have the confidence in him that he will take care of what you need. That's what faith is. Faith is the confidence in knowing that the Lord will take care of what you need to, have, have to happen. Now, if it's something that's flippant and you're just saying, I want to win a million dollars. Give me the six lottery ticket numbers. Really? <laughs> yeah, you and me both. I mean, just think about it. Maybe that's not right, you know. You might think that might help you, but you realize that every person that's won the lottery, it usually destroys them. The big major lotteries, you know. Mm -hmm. You always hear how it's a Christian going to win, and I'm going to give 10% to my church, and blah, blah, blah. And then within a couple months, they're broke again. I mean, think about that. It'd be just as well not to win. Now, if the Lord has it in your future to win, then yeah, bring it on. Let's go. And our text to give number is. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But if you want, you know, it's, it's just one of those things, you know, where you got to realize what are you asking and is it within God's will for you to ask of that subject that you're asking for? Something to think about. Okay, here we go. Proverbs 10, 9. Proverbs 10, 9. He who walks with integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will become known. Mm -hmm. There you go. I like the fact that when we walk with integrity, that's when we're secure. Yes. You know, if we're running around doing things wrong and, and cheating people and, and, and not being true to our word, um, we're, we're, we're going to get uh, uh, bad things happening to us. <laughs> <laughs> I started to go somewhere I didn't need to go. Well, it's not <laughs> karma, but. <laughs> we're, 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 gonna, we're, we're not going to have, uh, you know, security of the Lord on our side and we're not going to have. The joy of the Lord. We're not going to have the protection of the Lord right. on our side when we don't have integrity. Because mm -hmm. God gives that person integrity. It's, like, it's one of those things you always hear. You have, What kind of character do you have when the door is closed? Mm -hmm. When you're at work and nobody else is there, are you working or are you goofing off? Mm -hmm. That's called integrity because you're working. So you need to, you know, understand that integrity is something to be proud of, not boastful, but you want to be proud of because people will honor you because you have integrity. That's from the Lord because he lines you up to put you right where he needs you to be, but you got to have integrity of the word to understand it. Something to think about. All right, let's jump into let's see here. John seventeen fifteen. John seventeen fifteen, and this is a, a very scripture heavy show. So, uh, as always, if you want notes from a show, you can send us an email at day by day with Rob and Jody at gmail dot com, and we'll be happy to send you a copy of those mm -hmm. notes. And uh, so, it's John seventeen fifteen. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. Mm -hmm. This is when Jesus is actually giving the instructions to his disciples right before he goes to the cross. And this is when he's asking God to protect his disciples. So see, Jesus can be our intercessor and ask for the Father God to be um, our protection. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, if you're not a Christian and all of a sudden you come up on something bad happening and you're like, oh, Jesus, help me. You know, something, it's in desperation, 
the Lord will help you. But then you need to reassess why are you not a Christian, yet you're calling on a Christian God to help you. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, think about that for a minute. Okay, how about Isaiah 26, 3? Isaiah 26, 3. That's my cue, isn't it? That's your cue. <laughs> I'm like, da da da. Oh my gosh, if we're not having fun, we're not doing it. That's right. right. Okay. Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Mm-hmm. The U's there are all capitalized. So the first U is you. I'm sorry. Back mm -hmm. that up. No. The first U is God. Right. And then the, the, the him is you. And the whose mind is you. And because he trusts in you, that's God. Have I totally confused you? So let's try it this way. You, God will keep me in perfect peace whose mind, my mind, is stayed on you, God, because he, me, trusts in you, the Lord. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's what you got to do by putting yourself into the scriptures. Yeah. Right, what it takes, what scripture you're reading, Slow down a little bit and put yourself into the word. Write it in. Mm -hmm. Don't don't destroy your Bible by you know. Just take a line and go. Okay, I'm gonna write through that word, just a line, and then I put my name right above yeah. it. Yeah. Personalize it. Right. Yeah, and, and and so it literally becomes you. God will keep Rob in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, Lord, because Rob trusts in you. Yes. I don't know what Jody's doing, but I know I'm trusting in the Lord. <laughs> you know I do. <laughs> okay, how about we jump to 1 Thessalonians 5, 6. 1 Thessalonians 5, 6. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. There you go. No drinking now. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, that's up to you and the Lord if you not want to have a glass means. of wine. But anyway, um, here we go. So not what that means. <laughs> it says say stay sober. <laughs> Be sober, doesn't it? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I misinterpret that? Uh, just slightly. Oh, well, I can have fun. Okay, so therefore, let us not sleep. As others do, but let us watch and be sober. So that means we're going to watch and, and, and have our protection, that we're having the Lord watch over us, and that, you know, we're being watchful, that nobody hits us on the freeway, that nobody takes your purse in the grocery store. You know, you're going to be mindful of what you need to watch around you, your circumstances. Okay. Nobody takes your purse in the grocery store. You strap that thing down like a luggage on a roof, you know? That's right. You can get out the bungee cords and strap it in. Uh-huh. Make sure my big wallet is in the <laughs> zipper part of the purse. He knows me well. Oh, my goodness, yes. Hey, I've seen I've seen the security videos where somebody distracts the person, yeah, yeah. and all of a sudden they walk up and steal the wallet right out. The purse is still there, but the wallet's gone. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Okay, moving on back to Psalm ninety one verse oh, four. Oh, I go back to the scriptures. Okay, Psalm ninety one verse four. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Yes.
part of Psalm 91. Here we go. I always say read the whole verse, the whole chapter. It's 16 verses. You can handle that. Try to memorize it even. That'd be great. So just a thought. I know whenever we went to Israel, whenever I went to Israel with Dr. Billy Brim on a study tour. It was interesting because every day we got on our uh, buses for transportation to go around Israel. It was every day, every morning, we would proclaim Psalm 91 over our trip, that it would be protected, that we were dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Everything, man, right down to the uh, living long and having a uh, long life with full and salvation. Verse 16. So it's just, you know, you need to go ahead and, and think about what you might need to memorize. So that's how I learned how to memorize it, because every day for a month, I'm reading that verse. So anyway, here we go. Psalm 91, verse 4, which is a wonderful thing. This is where you, you need to think of God as a mother hen. With his, He's describing a, a bird. And a mother hen is easier to portray. A bird is like uh, has his, has her wings out and has her chicks underneath her wings, and that's that she's in a nest. And now she's protecting. This actually happens in fires. The bird is now protecting the the chicks, and on, and the fire comes. It the fire burns the mother, but the babies are fine because then they come and pick up the dead bird and the, ch the chicks are right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what the visual is that, we supposed, that we're supposed to understand how God watches over us. He puts his protecting wings yeah. over us to where he did die on the cross for us. To where, number one, we don't have to die for our sins. That's huge. Mm -hmm. But now he's protecting us from the world, from COVID-19, coronavirus, or whatever you want to call it. He's protecting us from that. And you need to praise the Lord every day you get up that you're protected from that. Oop, better hustle. All righty, here we go. Psalm 118, verse 8. Psalm 118.8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man mm -hmm. without a doubt. Wow, do I really need to That one's pretty say, self Say more about that one. Go for it. Psalm 37.3. Yes. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. There's another one. Trust in the Lord and do good. Well, there you go. You can memorize that real quick. Mm -hmm. And dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. That's great. I love that one. Mm -hmm. How about Proverbs 18, verse 10? Proverbs 18, 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Mm hmm There you go. And yes, when you got born again, you became righteous. So you're able to run to God. Mm-hmm. Okay, how about Psalm 62, verse 2. Psalm 62, 2. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. There you go. I like that because we, we, you know, some things can move you. Mm -hmm. But this says don't be moved. Mm hmm Oh, excuse me. I'll wake up now. Did you miss your nap today? I did. Oh, my God. Holy goodness. moly. Catch it up on me. You know I'm kidding, right? <laughs> 
Okay, let's see. How about James 4, verse 7? James 4, 7. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Yes, I like, there you go. This, this works on all sorts of stuff. So you need to resist the devil and he will flee. Use the name of Jesus with this verse. But you need to do the first thing, and that is submit to God. Mm -hmm. That's right there, black and white. Submit to God. And then you are to resist the devil and resist the devil and resist the devil and resist the devil and resist the devil. And ultimately, the devil gets tired of messing with you, and then he goes. He flees. But he may stay a while just to kind of mess with you. Mm -hmm. You know, and you emphasize resist the devil, resist the devil, resist the devil, resist the devil. But you got to also emphasize you got to submit to God, submit to God, submit to God, submit to God. That's right. Not, it's not something you do once. Right. You got to continually do it. And as you continually submit to God, you resist the devil. Right. But it's now it's not for salvation. That's just in life. No, 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 no. That's... Salvation, you, you can do once or you can do it again. Right. No, but submitting to God is, is, an, is an ongoing thing. Right. That's an ongoing process. That's continually uh, um, reading the Word of God, doing the things that the Word of God says to do. It's constantly reaching out in prayer, having that communication with God. All of those things are continually submitting to God, mm -hmm. taking him as your, your, your authority, your Lord. And, right. You know, and then resisting the devil. To resist the devil is, is like the second part of that, you know. It doesn't do much good to resist the devil if you're not submitted to God. This is true. Carrying out the, the words of God. Okay. How about we jump over here to Psalm 68, 4 and 5. Psalm 68, 4 and 5. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. By his name, Yahweh, and rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitation. Mm -hmm. Wow, I love that. So if you ever want to just really tick the devil off, start singing praises. Even when you don't feel like it, even when you're crying, mm -hmm. even when you're so wound up, I just don't know what to do. Yeah, that's the time you want to start singing. Mm -hmm. Even if you're making a joyful noise unto the Lord, that's what he wants. It doesn't have to be perfect. There you go. Just start singing to the Lord. And then by his name, Yahweh. And re re yeah. And rejoice before him. Um, I just love this. Can you just re imagine David at that time rejoicing in front of the Lord where he had the Ark of the Covenant mm -hmm. and he was just rejoicing in front of the Lord so much. Mm -hmm. Whenever he's, he's rejoicing and rejoicing and rejoicing and he's singing and he's praising and now he's stripping off clothes and, you know, and his wife is saying, no, stop that. You're getting vulgar. And he's going, no, I, I will get more vulgar yet to praise my Lord. Really happened. Check Psalms. Okay. Speaking of Psalms. Rejo rejoice. Yeah, rejoice in the Lord. And what's that song? And, re and rejoice again. Mm -hmm. And again. Yeah. How about Psalm 9, verse 9? Psalm 9, 9. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in times of trouble. Mm -hmm. so he will be a refuge in time of trouble. Awesome.
I think that's so sweet. I love it. I love it. I love it. So if you're in trouble, this is your verse. So now we've got the most important thing that we could ever do on this show. And that is to ask if you, the listener or person watching on Facebook Live, would like to make Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior. So, you know, if you got Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you've got it. Now, we're not promising that everything is going to be wonderful and fantastic and great. Because usually what happens is the devil comes and attacks you right after you become a, uh, born again, as, the, as we say. Yeah, you know, and if you make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, that is, that is a requirement for the protection of the Lord, in, in yes. a sense. You know, and as we kind of go back through all these scriptures here, you know, he will, est he will establish you and guard you from the evil one. He will be the strength of your life. He is your refuge and your fortress. In God you can trust. He's your, your uh, uh, strength and your refuge, a very present help in trouble. He will preserve you from trouble. He will surround you with songs of deliverance. He will make you dwell in safety. Mm -hmm. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. And he knows to be a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows who those who trust in him, those who trust in him. He he will uh, he who walks with integrity walks securely. Um, he again he should keep you from the evil one. He will keep you in perfect peace because he, you trust in him. Mm -hmm. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will take refuge. It's better to trust the Lord than to put in confidence in a man. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. The name of the Lord is a strong tire. The righteous run to it and are safe. He is your rock and your salvation. He is your defense. I'm just kind of going back through all the different scriptures here and all these things that are promised to us. Resist the devil and he will flee for you. Flee from you. Flee 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 from you <laughs> because you submit to God. Sing to God, sing praises to his name, and rejoice before him. And the Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Mm -hmm. Boy, that was a Reader's Digest version of all the scriptures we went through today. But, uh, you that know. That was a great recap. But all of those things require that you call out to the Lord at some point. And, you know. To, to have the most effectiveness, I guess you would say, you, you need to make the Lord the Lord of your life. Mm -hmm. You need to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. That, that's what it boils down to. And we want to help you do that. So how do we do that? Well, you just, if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you just have to do a simple prayer asking the Lord to come into your heart. But you got to believe it. you got to mean it. you got to want it. It's not just a, a fire insurance policy. It's not just, oh, I'll say this and I'll be good. I can go on doing what I want to do. No. It, it does require a little bit of a commitment, a little bit of effort on your part to follow the Lord, mm -hmm. to do the things that he's asked us to do, some of which we've talked about in the scriptures today, and much more that you can find in the book, the Bible, that will teach you to live a life worthy of the Lord in it. Yeah, but it's also something that if, Say you went ahead and you fell off the wagon, and I don't mean drinking. I mean that you you decided that, you know, I don't need God anymore. I'm good. And yeah, that's after making him the Lord of your life when you were a teenager. Mm -hmm. Or after you, you know, you were in college, and you're like, ah, I don't need this. And college taught you how to be a socialist. Uh, and sometimes it's not that deliberate a decision either. No. Sometimes just life happens life and you happens get further and, you and further forget. away. Yeah. Yeah, you forget. You got it. Yeah, the Lord didn't help me on that one. I'll I'll try it myself now. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm I've done both. In 1978, do the math. You'll figure how old I am. In high school, I did give my heart to the Lord. 
over Christian television. Mm -hmm. I did. And then life happened, went to college, got married to the wrong guy, even though God tried to tell me not to marry this guy. And ended up to where it was just, you know, ugly. What in the world was going on? My life just wasn't panning out the way I had wanted it to. And then he ultimately got in the car and left, drove 3,000 miles away, and left me holding the bank, the baby, the everything. So now I've got, the baby was seven years old, actually. So, you know, just you know, the whole thing. And I'm just like, now, I, mean, I had 25 checks at the time bouncing all over Orange County. And thankfully, <clears throat> between the Lord and my mother, they helped me out. Mm -hmm. And the Lord really did. Because what did I do? I slid down the wall of my mother's dining room at the time about midnight. In June of 2009, excuse me, of 1992, and slid down the wall in her house and rededicated my life to the Lord and got sold out for him. And I mean literally sold out for him. I, I, I was seeing kids, high schoolers wearing, you know, in Satan service t-shirts that looked like the Salvation Army shirt. And it says, in Satan's service. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm not going to do that. I know who my Lord is, and that, that my Lord is going to be Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's whenever I went ahead and said a prayer. In the tears, in the everything, I said, Lord, take this mess and do something with it. Take my life and do something with it. Yeah. So we're going to lead you in a prayer like that right now. If you've never done that before, we'd like to lead you in that prayer right now. So just repeat after me. Father God, Father God, I thank you that uh, you know that I'm a sinner. I thank you, Lord, that you know I'm a sinner. And that I need your help. And that you know I need your help. I need your protection, Lord. I need your protection, Lord. I need your guidance. I need your guidance. I need your grace and mercy. I need your grace and mercy. Lord, I've made mistakes. Lord, I've made mistakes. But in you, they can be forgiven. But in you, they can be forgiven. Lord, I give myself to you. Lord, I give myself to you. I confess my sins to you. I confess my sins to you. I ask for your forgiveness. I ask for your forgiveness. And I pray, Lord. And I pray, Lord. That you will take my life and do something with it. That you will take my life and do something with it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you just said that prayer, then you have just become a member of the family of God. And we'd like to welcome you to the family of God. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to welcome you in your new life as a Christian believer. Find yourself a good church to attend, a good, good Bible-believing Bible church. Yep. Get yourself a good Bible. If you don't know how to do that, if you don't know how to find one, you don't know how to get one, get a hold of us here at Hope Recovery Center, or you can get a hold of us on the Day by Day with Robin Jody show at day by day with Robin Jody at gmail.com or on our Facebook on our page Facebook page at day by day with Robin Jody and uh, on our website www.tcb4jc.org that's taking care of business for Jesus Christ if you, as I told you earlier if you'd like notes from any of our shows please email us and we'll be happy to send those notes to you uh, let us know the topic of the show so we know what notes to send you I uh, so I want to say if you don't have a Bible we can at least send you the New Testament. There you go. Co yeah. Totally free, no cost to you. We'll pay for shipping. Just let us know what it, what you need. Absolutely. And um, be sure that when you uh, like us on Facebook, you hit you uh, hit the notifications buttons. Uh, check us out on your favorite uh, podcast. Hit the notifications button down there. You can get the new shows when they drop on Tuesday mornings, uh, somewhere around six a.m. And this show is done live every week here on Facebook at uh, 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So we invite you to join us here on Facebook Live for that. And um, if this show has been a blessing to you, please support our ministry with the text to give option. Simply send the words day by day, no spaces in it, just day by day, to 44321. There you can choose your donation amount and a monthly or one-time giving. And we hope you'll consider an ongoing donation to support the work of our ministry. We'd like to leave you with a closing blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. 
And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Until next week, I'm Rob. And I'm Jody. Join us as we continue to help you find hope in Jesus Christ on Day by Day with Rob and Jody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.